so as a reminder, you should have read, and I guess I should just leave this hint on. I might want this value of constant. So um, you do need to know Coulomb's law, this uh, expression for electric force, Coulomb's law, which says that electric force is equal to, or it's a proportional to product of charges and inversely proportional to the distance squared. And that's the proportionality relationship. So you need a constant to make this into an equation. Uh, that constant is called the Coulomb's, uh, Coulomb constant. Um, in here, the hint gives you the numerical value. If not, you would look it up. It's in the appendix. It's probably also in this section. So you're using Coulomb's law. So this is one information that you will need. So now <laughs> let me uh, read the question. It says, two point particles with some amount of charges, Q1 and Q2, are held in place by some amount of force. Um, let me use F0. On each charge in appropriate directions. Uh, how far apart are the two charges? Okay, let me start drawing the pictures so that I can make sure that I didn't miss anything. So I have one charge, Q1, which will be, I guess, plus four micro coulomb. And I have another charge, um, which will, Q2, which will be plus two micro coulomb. And I hope from covering Coulomb's law, you get the sense that if they are both positive, then the force between them is repulsive. So if you are looking at the electric force between them, the plus four micro coulomb charge is pushing this plus two micro coulomb charge in a direction away from itself. And there is an equal and opposite force on the plus four micro coulomb charge. There's a force from the plus two micro coulomb charge repelling. So when you look at the direction of the electric force, it's opposite to the uh, direction that the other force was in. And the magnitude here, it's, uh, it's equal to this magnitude. You can see that by looking at the Coulomb's law. It's, uh, I guess, <laughs> the fancy way to state it, it's symmetric with respect to the exchange or um, exchange. Yeah, with respect to the exchange of the two charges. So whether it's uh, Q1 applying force on Q2 or Q2 applying force on Q1, the magnitude of the force is the same. So yeah, it, I wanted to highlight this to say uh, Coulomb's law or electric force is, it's a consistent with uh, Newton's third law. It, 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 so Newton's third law is a general, generally applicable law. All the forces that you will learn from now on ever should obey Newton's third law. If you ever find that it doesn't, that should be a source of great con consternation. Yeah, so that's the situation. And if this were just left by itself, those two charges would fly away. That's why the question is telling you that there is this eight Newton force, which is, I guess, I'm, they must be being applied um, in, in the inward direction on both of them. Uh, so each of these are eight Newtons. Um, so these must have the same magnitude as the electric force so that on the net force on each of these charges are zero. So, so that's the setup. And um, I guess I can just pick one of the two charges and uh, do the analysis based on that. And the numbers I get for one of the two charges should match the other charge. So let me draw, oh, so this is the free body diagram that I've already drawn that I would consider for plus two micro coulomb charge. So I'll start writing down some expression, watch out for any unknowns that I might have and look for those unknowns. All right, so let me uh, write down the net force equation. I'm writing down, you, so you know, this is almost like a standard, uh, standard strategy problem or Newton's second law strategy problem. And the reason it looks like Newton's second law strategy problem is the question involves a force. So that's, uh, so I hope that doesn't surprise you that the basic equation that you're working with is the net force is equal to zero um, <laughs> because I'm holding things in place, held in place. So it's a static equilibrium question. Um, so that force adds up to zero 
And the way that's up to zero is that I have electric force. Let's call this direction positive. Uh, I have electric force, uh, and which is in opposite direction from this applied force, dead up to zero. Um, and for electric force, I have the expression for it. That's the Coulomb's law. So let me write it down. Um, so Coulomb's constant times, let's say the force is being applied by the, so this is Q1 times Q1. Um, that's the source of the electric force and the electric force is being applied on this charge Q2 divided by d squared. Oh, I don't have, oh, so let me label the distance d between them. Minus the applied force is equal to zero. Okay, so looking at that equation, I'm counting, oh, one unknown. I think I know every other quantity. I know Coulomb's constant, the charges are given, the force is given. I don't know the distance between the two charges. So let me go through that short algebra to figure out, uh, express a D in terms of all the other unknowns. And then I just plug in the number. So, um, so the steps, so I'm gonna skip most of the algebra steps, but what I'm basically doing is moving this over and then multiplying both sides by, um, d2 squared, uh, sorry, d squared, um, and then dividing both sides by f naught, and then taking the square root to get d by itself. When you've done that, this is what you should get. d is equal to the Coulomb constant times q1 times q2 divided by f naught square rooted. And it's good to be in the habit of checking your units. So when you are looking at the Coulomb constant, this is going to be the unit. So it's a Newton times meter squared per Coulomb squared. So when I multiply by these two uh, factors, Coulomb squared, that'll cancel out this Coulomb squared. And when I divide by the force in Newtons, it'll uh, cancel out this Newton. So this whole quantity will be in unit of meter squared. So when I take the square root, this whole square rooted quantity will have unit of meters. So all of that works out as I would hope it does. And um, the main reason to do this dimensional check is to make sure that you didn't make any algebra mistakes. That's the main value at this point. So I have the expression. Let me just uh, plug in the numbers into calculator. Um, so plug in the numbers, KE, I have the number there, 8.99 time, uh, times 10 to the power of nine. And I'm just gonna plug in all the numbers in SI units, um, trusting that when I do that, the, the, well, not trusting, I verify that I'll just end up with a unit of meter. So, um, so that times the charge one, Q1, so that's, uh, uh, so I'm going to handle these prefixes as I enter in. Micro Coulomb is 10 to the minus six Coulomb. So this is gonna be four times 10 to the power of minus six. So that's Q1 times the charge two, Q2, it's gonna be two times 10 to the power of minus six. That's the micro Coulomb. Uh, that divided by the force, eight Newtons. Um, that's the whole fraction. Take the square root and that should be the distance. 0, 0.0, oh wait, I can write it first so that will stay in the screen. So that's equal to 0 0.09. Um, I guess here I can round it to five because it's less gonna give me less than 1% error. Um, so at vector square root, that's in unit of meter. Okay. But as a default, um, if you don't want to figure out the percent errors and whatnot, then, you know, keep three significant figures. So pretty easy question. Um, biggest reason I did it was um, so that I can mention that Coulomb's law obeys Newton's third law. 
that it's <laughs> Newton's third law is generally applicable and Coulomb's law is no exception. 